I don't know about you, but I love people. All kinds of people. <laughs> Even the ones that disagree with me. <laughs> That's what we're here for. Is to uh, just be with people. Huh? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Town hall meeting, Saturday, 10.30. Please be there. Hallelujah. And uh, the other folks that come to church here, please stir them up to come out. It'll be worth their time, worth their while. It's important. Hallelujah. Yes, ma'am. Is it here? Right cheer. Right cheer. Amen. Elders meeting is going to be up there at 9.30, but the town hall meeting will be right here. Huh? Yeah, it'll be online. It'll be open. No donuts. Donuts? No donuts. No donuts. No, 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 no. You can bring them to the elders meeting, though, right? Donuts? Yeah, okay, all right. Yeah, okay. <laughs> the kitchen, kitchen will be open. Coffee will be there. Yes, sir. Bless you. Bless you. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. I'll tell you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, sir. I've got it on my phone, too, on my calendar. James coming on the property at 7 o'clock. That's been my declaration every day. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. That's a good thing. Glory. I want to talk to you today about choosing life. Choose life. Now, I, I know that the first, first place your mind will go, I pray, it will go to the abortion problem that we have in America, which is horrendous and in the world, actually. But that's really not uh, what I'm going to talk about tonight, although that's hugely important. And uh, I pray that you will call your congressman, email them, do whatever you need to do, and tell them to defund Planned Parenthood. Hallelujah. The, the only Planned Parenthood that's worth anything is God sent his only begotten son <laughs> so that we would not perish but have everlasting life and to bring sons and daughters into the kingdom. That's Planned Parenthood. <laughs> God planned on parenting a whole bunch of righteous seed. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. All right. <laughs> Hallelujah. But God wants us, you and I, to choose life. And, you know, you say, well, yeah, I know, yeah, of course. Uh, you know. But he, he says in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19, I call heaven and earth to witness this day against you. I have set before you a choice. That's a beautiful thing about God. He gives everybody a choice. And he says, I set before you a choice. Life and death. Blessings and curses. Therefore, choose life. Choose life. That you, and not just you, but you and your descendants may live. So our choices don't just have to do with us. Amen? Amen? Life is only found, we know, life is only really found in one, in, in one person, and that person is in Christ Jesus. Amen. The Word of God. In, in John 1.1, 1, 1, it says, In the beginning before all time was the Word Christ, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God Himself. Hallelujah. God in the person of His Son. Amen? Right? God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Three in one. All right. Jesus is the only access to the Father. He's not a way. Buddha's not a way. Allah's not a way. Muhammad's not a way. Krishna's not a way. I mean, the, you, you just can go on and on. Jesus said, I am the way. That's it. Okay? The truth, not a truth, but the truth and the life. Not a life, the life. He is the resurrection. He is 
the life, and he said, no one can come to the Father but by me. So there aren't many ways to heaven. I didn't say that. God said that. Broad is the way to destruction. Narrow is the gate that leads to everlasting life. Jesus came so we would live, and not just live, but, 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 but to live abundantly, to live life at the fullest. In the last part of John 10, 10, he says, I came that you might have and enjoy life, not just have and enjoy life, but have it to the full abundance that, the original, that God originally designed for us. And there's only one thing standing between each of us and the abundant life, and first of all, that's in receiving Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And the second thing is doing what his word says, what he says. He says, if you love me, you'll do what I say. And he says that because he loves us. He's not trying to withhold anything. He's not trying to keep things from us. You know, he's not got he, this, I, I just want to punish you and make you holy kind of thing. It's life. In the way he designed us, he created us, he knows exactly how we're going to be the most fulfilled, and he's the only one that can actually set us in the proper place to enjoy life and life to the fullest. He says, to, in the Amplified Bible, it says, to have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. I, I want an overflowing life. The older I get, the more I want it overflowing. Amen. Amen. I'm enjoying life. I intend to enjoy life. And uh, the, I found out the only way I'm, I'm really going to do that is in Christ. Amen. I've tried a few things on my own. They haven't exactly worked out all that good. I hate to admit it, but it's just simply the truth. So that's just how it is. So Jesus came to the world so we could live. The Word of God, then he gives us. Remember, Jesus never said anything. He didn't hear the Father say. He never did anything. He didn't see the Father do. But he, this word of God, what did the Father say? We've got a whole book full of it. What the Father has said, what Jesus has said, because, and that's what the Father said, because Jesus said, I only say what the Father says. So even the red letters are what God the Father says. Amen. Hallelujah. And uh, it's, the word of God is declared to be alive. It's not just a book. It's not just ink on paper. It's not just another good novel or a, even a good historical uh, treatise. It's, it's the word of God. And it says in Hebrews 4.12, for the word that God speaks is alive and full of power. Not just, it's not a little power, but it's full of power, making it active, operative, energizing, and effective. Sharper than any two-edged sword. It has the really talking about uh, more of a, a, a scalpel, a, a surgeon's scalpel, able to penetrate to the very dividing line of the breath of life, the soul, and the immortal spirit of joints and marrow of the deepest parts of our nature. In other words, exposing, sifting, analyzing, judging the very thoughts and purposes of the heart. Now, I don't know about you, that makes me a little nervous sometimes. <laughs> huh? Well, not too. Because you put the word in, you put the word in, you put the word in, and that's the abundance of your heart. Your brain may still have a problem or two. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Come on, because that's still, until, until the brain has really got its thinking in agreement with the heart, you've got a problem. All right. So, it, it, it challenges us, and it should. I, I love it when I hit a verse that just nails me. And I'm amazed at how many I have skipped over because I guess I just didn't want to obey at the time. I just didn't see it as that important at the time. I don't know if that, any of you are like that. You may not be. You may just, every word, you know, you just stop and say, I'm going to do that. You know, but uh, uh, as I go along, I find out here something else. It'll just jump out. It'll say, uh, haven't you been skipping something here? Have you been, don't you think we need to deal with this? Oh, man, yeah, yeah we, we do. Uh, today? <laughs> yeah, today. Of course, he shows it to you for immediate obedience. 
Hallelujah. The words we speak, too, are, are either going to bring us death or they're going to bring us life. I, I've wrestled with this. I, I don't know how long. And, and I, again, just slow learner. I mean, I, I heard, I've heard this for a long time. And uh, it's kind of like going to Shiloh. We used to go to Shiloh 18 years, we, well, all but one year. So we were actually up there on a vacation, uh, tent meetings, just phenomenal, up in the Bitterroot Valley in Montana. And we'd go up there, and uh, the first time we went up there, we didn't even make it to the first pass. What was that? Chief Joseph passed there. We didn't even make it that far, and we were arguing and fussing and fighting. We'd already lost everything that we got at camp, and it was a great camp, great word. I think the next time we, we carried, we carried, we were pregnant with the word of God and the anointing for about a week. The next time, I think we kept it for a month or so. After that, it was as it went along, finally, we came to the place where we could actually go up there, get filled up, carry it back, and stay full of it, and just, you know, going for it. Hallelujah. In spite of whatever uh, the naysayers, who were still in the process. Well, it's the same way. I go, I've, I've, heard, I've heard the, be careful what you say. Words are important. Words are powerful. Make sure you speak the words of God all the time but somehow my feelings get in the way somehow my emo my, my emotions get in the way my thoughts get in the way the the uh, the facts get in the way you know facts are not necessarily truth and so we've got to learn to side with the truth well what is the truth jesus said i am the truth and he is, oh, the Word. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. So we need to, we need to begin to, to side with him and choose life. See, God wants us to choose life. Really simple. And the words we speak are the choice we make. The words we speak will bring us death or bring us life, depending on what we speak. Proverbs 18, 21, death and life are in the power of a tongue. Well, surely it can't be that simple. Huh? But it really is. And they who indulge in it shall eat the fruit of it for death or for life, for success or for failure, for richer or for poorer. It's the rudder on the ship, and we're the ship. Whether you're in a storm or whether you're in a calm sea, you're the ship. And you're going to be guided by the tongue. Now, you can say, oh, me now, it's okay. Uh, just if you want to admit that you don't always say what you should say. But the problem is that every time that we speak something contrary to the Word of God, we tear up whatever Word of God we've spoken. We tear up whatever good thing we've spoken. It's kind of like planting a plant and then going out and digging it up every week and wondering why it's shriveling and dying. It's the same idea. But this living word needs to be spoken, and it has the power of death and life. Psalm 59, 12 says, For the sin of their mouth and the words of their lips, let them even be taken in their pride, and for cursing and lying which they speak. There's a snare in our mouth if we're not careful to speak the word of God. I've got to, I've got to speak to my wife the word of God or words that are compatible with the Word of God. You understand, once we get the Word of God in, it should cause everything we say to begin to align with those concepts, the character and the nature of God. And we begin to, we begin to treat people differently. Are you here? 
Amen. Okay. So, so what words should we be speaking? God's words. God's words are tried words. I don't like to try new things. I don't like to reinvent wheels. Wheels are wonderful. The older I get, the more I love wheels. I like hand trucks. I like wagons. I like motorcycles. I like cars. I like wheels. And it's a wonderful invention, wheels. I'm glad they're not square. I'm glad they're round. Can you imagine driving a car with <laughs> Right? It's kind of like one of the low riders in L.A., just with the, the air things in there. Huh? No. It's every, it makes everything easier, doesn't it? Why reinvent them? They work great. They really do. Praise the Lord. God's word are tried words. You have something that works, don't break it. Go ahead and use it. Don't challenge it if it's working. Amen. <laughs> And his words are tried words. They will accomplish what, are sp he, what, what they're spoken to accomplish. In, in Psalm 12 and 6, it says, The word of the Lord are pure words. Why are they pure? Because they have been tried in a furnace of the earth, purified seven times. I believe that's talking about Jesus. I believe it's, talk, it's talking about us, too. It's in, there, there's the earthen furnace, if you will, and there's levels of understanding, but I believe they were the word of God was tried in Jesus and found faithful, found that it works. Amen. When he spoke to Lazarus, I'm glad he said, Lazarus, come out, or the grave would have, the whole graveyard would have emptied. Probably the whole world's graveyards would have emptied. He had to be specific because there was a power in the words that he spoke. His words are refined. They're tested. They're proved. They're backed by God himself. And we've got to understand that. He, he doesn't just say, well, just, re, just say what I say. He said, no, I, I have tried these words, proven these words. They are eternal I, I'm so sure of them that I've actually, I have a higher regard for them than I do my name. And I've established them eternally. These, these are fixed, my words. Mark eleven twenty three. 23, truly I tell you, whoever says to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea, does not doubt in his heart, but believes what he says will take place, it will be done for him. Can God lie? No. But guess what? Our experience, the facts, will cause us to not, what? Trust that when we say something that aligns with the Word of God, that it, it has to take place. It has to. Well, how long is that going to take? I mean, we, we, want, we want oven answers in a microwave sometimes. I, I loved it when I was a brand new Christian. Everything happened really fast, seemed to. Just, boy, I'll tell you, I prayed and things happened. Well, then I had to grow up some. And some things were, wait a while on that one. I don't, I don't wait well. Do you wait well? I don't wait well. But if we're not careful, we'll begin to change our theology. We'll begin to question the word of God and, and try to make excuses for why one thing or another isn't happening the way he said it would. And yet if we'll really just kind of shut up, take a step back and look at people who have managed to control their tongue, we see this stuff works. The only people it doesn't work for are the people that try it. Not try it in the sense that it's already been tried, but just kind of give it a poke at it a little bit. Well, I had a good confession for about a week, and that didn't work, and so I'm still sick. Well, I've been there. I've done that. I mean, just wore, wore something out, and it hasn't happened. 
And then I scratch my head and say, well, gee, you know, I be, you begin to question. The devil comes along, fiery darts, a little thought. Well, maybe, maybe it wasn't really God that said that to you. Uh, may, maybe that's not really what he meant. Uh, what can it be? And try to get a seed of doubt in there. We've got to learn to keep the shield of faith up and catch the fiery darts, amen? Huh? When we speak the word of God, we'll walk in a path of revelation and of security because in Psalm 119, 105, it says, your word, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I'm not going to stumble. I'm not going to be surprised by something that like one of those boulders, you know, when the lights aren't on and trip over one of those, you know, you bend somewhere, <laughs> right? And that kind of a, no, he lights our path. He illumines our way. He gives us revelation on what's coming, what's next. And he says in Psalm 78, one, give ear, O my people, to my law and incline your ears to the words of my mouth. Why? Because they are life. Now, the thief, he, he comes, he tries to steal. He wants to steal the word out of your heart and out of your mouth. John 10.10, 10, the, the, the thief comes only in order to steal, kill, destroy. The first thing he steals is the word. Then he, then he can start working on you. He has nowhere to go if you can stay in the word, hold the shield of faith up, stand up, stand with the word, the sword, you're secure. But he'll kill you and he'll destroy you if he can get you to dump the word. He'll kill your dream. He'll destroy your future. So it's really critical. In Mark chapter 4, verse 14 through 19 is that whole parable of the sower and this part is where Jesus is, is explaining it to those that are given to know. The sower sows the word. The ones along the path are those uh, who have the word sown in their hearts. But when they hear, Satan comes at once and by force takes away the message which was sown in them. That's always going to be his first attack. You get, you get the word some revelation in the word, the first thing he's going to do is come and try and steal it. Drive it right out of you. Attack you full on. And you've just got to stand and having done all stand. And after a while, he won't, he won't hit you so hard because you, you'll start blood in his nose. You'll start giving him a headache. You'll start carving him up with the word. Amen. Hallelujah. Then he gets, you know, he gets a little more subtle after that, and, and he, he goes through, you know, the, the, he, hears, he, 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 he tries to, he tries to, to uh, get you to not develop character, so you can just, you'll hear the word, but, eh, you know, after a while, just kind of, well, anyway, you, you get offended about something, and off you go, kind of thing, and the devil loves that kind of stuff. No wonder that, that love, it, in Corinthians it said love is never offended. Never. Not easily. Easily is not in the original language. It's just never. <laughs> Ouch. Hmm? Hallelujah. And then the cares and anxiety of the world and all deceitfulness of riches. Why? Where, the only way that can come in is when we've, we've forgotten that the Lord said, I'll make you rich and add no sorrow to it. By my stripes you were healed. I mean, it, it, over and over and over again, he deals with every single area of our life. He gives us a word for it. And the only way that the devil can come in is if we get anxious about this or worried about that or you know, we just get overwhelmed with this, that, and the other thing or, or, or oh, how am I going to pay the bills? I don't have any money. I'll tell you what. He will take care of it if we can speak the word and trust him. There's a promise for everything. A promise from a God who cannot lie, who is in covenant with us. And that's what's so important. Yes, he wants, he wants us to 
obey him. You love me, you obey me. But you know what? He's a rewarder of anybody that diligently seeks him. And so we can't lose. Just no way to lose. See, what we say can be the very snare of the fowler that, that causes our demise. We're snared with the words of our lips. We're caught by the speech of our mouth, Proverbs 6, 2 says. Proverbs 12, 13, the wicked is dangerously snared by the transgression of his lips, but the uncompromisingly righteous shall come out of trouble. When I'm in trouble, I'm on my way out. Hallelujah. When we know how the devil snares us, we can avoid the pitfalls and the traps. Amos chapter 3, verse 5, can a bird fall into a snare upon the earth when there's no trap? Well, not a bird, but a human can because they can flap their mouth and set a trap for themselves. Hmm? Does a trap spring up from the ground when nothing at all has set it or sprung it? So we need to be careful not to give place to the devil in our speech. We need to, we need to take more thought about what we say. I believe, I, I, I know I'm talking to me tonight, so you can just, you know, you can take what you want of it, but this is for me tonight. Hallelujah. It's just something that, that repetition is a great teacher, being reminded of the importance of words are, 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 uh, can't, can't really be emphasized enough. We need to hear, we need to process, we need to receive, we need to perform. Mark 14, 20 says, those that are sown on good, well-adapted soil are the ones who hear the word, receive and accept it, welcome it, and then let it bear fruit. I want to be a fruit bearer. Hallelujah. Some 30, some as much as some, some 60 as much, some even 100 times as much. Increase. God's into increase. God's into multiplication. God's into fruitfulness. And remember, we have the promises of God who can't lie. He can't lie that what he speaks will be done. Isaiah 55 and 11, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void without producing any effect. It won't be useless, but it shall accomplish that which I please and purpose, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. I think those are words worth speaking. That's something worth saying. Our desire should be to see what God saw, speak what God spoke, and then do what Jesus did. I mean, isn't there a cause? There is a cause. Our, our country's in a mess now, but you know what? It's not too late. That's our Goliath. But all we need is a few Davids. Actually, we only need one, but it's nice if each one of us would rise up, hallelujah, against whatever Goliath we're faced with. Glory to God. Our desire should be to... to to just, 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 just get so in touch with God that we can see what he sees, speak what he speak, spoke, and do what Jesus uh, did. Let the words of my mouth, it said in Psalm 19, 14, and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my firm, impenetrable rock, and my redeemer. Yeah. Out of the abundance of the heart, see, beloved, the mouth speaks. It, it'll supersede what your head thinks. Your heart thinks as what 40,000 or yeah, 40,000 what neurons or whatever, it thinks. It communicates with your mind. And it, it, it it adjusts, if, if the mind will listen to it, it adjusts what you will receive, what you won't, what you'll choose, what you don't. The conscience is there. The Spirit of God is there. We put the Word of God in there, and that's what we will begin to speak. And then our mind will get, it'll say, oh, that's what I'm supposed to be thinking. And then the brain will begin to conform. It's amazing. 
neuroscience is, is finding some amazing things now. The Word of God has always said, Your word have I laid up in my heart that I might not sin against you, it says in Psalm 119.11. How, how people say, well, how are you ever going to live a sinless life? It's easy. Put the word in, 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 all of a sudden, boom, the thing that's been plaguing you for I, who knows how long suddenly just is not a big deal anymore. Really. I mean, I've tried quitting a lot of things. I don't quit well. I'm a, I've got an addictive... Uh, my issue. I've got an addictive personality. It's good, it's good when I'm addicted to the right things, but it's not good when I'm addicted to other things. Right? Huh? But see, you put the word in, you put the word in, you put the word in, all of a sudden there's no room for anything else and your mind, your mind just caves to what's in your heart and your brain readjusts and all of a sudden you, that's just who you are and the way you think and you don't even know why you had your problem, whatever issue, so long. Because it's gone. It's gone. God does it. We don't do it. Except by just cooperating. And a lot of that just has to do with the words. What are we saying? Oh, I've never amounted to anything. Oh, you know, my family's always been poor. I tried to quit, but I just can't quit. Those are all lies. They're, they're justifications, really. We're telling ourselves what we've always thought, and we need, to, we need to get back over into the Word of God and say, well, God, what do you say about this? Well, he says, I, I say you can do all things through Christ which strengthens you. How do you like that? Oh, well, gee, I don't know. Good, say it some more. You'll begin to believe it. Well, I won't be a hypocrite. Pump it in anyway until you agree. Isn't that what repentance is? Changing our mind, that's all it is. That's all repentance is. You change your mind, then your actions change. And I realize you can change your actions and then your mind will change, but it works a whole lot better if you just change your mind, agree with God, and then your actions begin to change. Praise the Lord. So our, our heartfelt prayer, I, I, I pray tonight, will be like that of Solomon in 1 Kings 8.26. He said, now, O God of Israel, let your word which you spoke to your servant David, my father, be confirmed by experience. I say, Father, let your word that you spoke to Abraham be my experience. He's the father of faith. Father, let... let let the promises, the word you spoke to Adam and Eve about being fruitful and multiplying and all of that, let that be my experience. What, what you spoke to Joshua, let that be my experience. Hallelujah. He's no respecter of persons. Right? Hallelujah. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. And the heart of God is that you and I will be so saturated with his word, we'll be doers of the word, not hearers only. And that's what it takes. You put it in, you put it in. And you, you tell him why you can't do what it is that the word is saying to do and then until you put it in. And finally you say, you know what? If he says I can do it, I can do it. I never dreamed that my feet would touch the nations that they've touched. I used to say, I can't do that. I don't know how I'd ever do that. I can't afford to do that. Until he began to start changing what I thought and what I was saying. And he said, go ye. And I decided to go. My God. Wouldn't trade it for anything. I know any of you that have been in other countries, you know that's true. There's nothing like it. 
Hallelujah. He told me to stay home. I'm staying home. Because this country, he said, this country needs you more than the other nations do. And you know what? Now that, I look around, that's true. My cause, my cause is to raise up a company of people, bold as lions, to go into this society and change it one person at a time. To restore America, her exceptionalism, her greatness, her beauty. Hallelujah. And we can do it. I said we can do it. Amen. Hallelujah. It, it, sure, is it going to be work? Yeah. Is it, but it, it's one person at a time. It really is. It's just one person at a time. And, and believing the word of God, he would that none be lost. If that's the heart cry of God, I want it to be my heart cry. I want it to be the heart cry of this church. That at least everybody will have an opportunity. He wants us to do what Jesus did. Not just what Jesus did. And how can you say just what Jesus did? I mean, he cleansed the lepers. He raised the dead. He, I mean, oh, the stuff he did was just off the charts. It's so wonderful. But you know what? He said, you'll do greater works. I don't know what that means. I just think, whoo, I think I'd like to go for that. I know what a thrill it is to pray and have Jesus raise the dead. I just like it to happen more than once. Hmm? Amen? And, and it should, and it can. Hallelujah. And it will. John 14 and 12, I'm about to close. I assure you most solemnly, I tell you, if anyone steadfastly believes in me, steadfastly, steadfastly, steadfast. I had a pastor of a big mega church tell me, he said, well, you know, if, if I was where you were, I wouldn't still be there. And I said, if your father had that kind of attitude, you wouldn't have the church you have. Yeah. Steadfast. Immovable. What's the word of God say? What's the call of God? What's the cause? Hallelujah. I don't care how big Goliath is. It only takes one small stone. And we've got the rock. <laughs> if anyone steadfastly believes in me, he will himself be able to do the things that I do. I want, I, that, that, I'm taking that. I don't know about you. I'm taking that. If he believe, if he so steadfastly believed in me, he himself be able to do what I did. He himself will be able to do what I did. I, when I went overseas, I believed that. Somewhere along the way, I lost that. And I'm, I'm, I'm just absolutely positive without a shadow of a doubt that I'm pressing back toward that. Because if that's what he said, that's what he meant. And we don't have a right to lay any of it down. I had one guy, one guy say to me, he said, where be the miracles? And I just have to say back, where be the integrity? And then there'd be some miracles. Huh? Why isn't the church seeing the miracles that it, that, that it needs? Not just this church, but the church at large. What, where are they? It's because there's no integrity. Look at it. I mean, the world just says, you, you got to do it our way. And we say, okay, all right. Uh-uh. What's the word of God say? He didn't change his mind. It stands eternal. So let's just stand with that. Go with that. Hallelujah. Amen. The things, if you're steadfast, if you steadfastly believe in me, he will himself be able to do the things I do, and he will do greater things than these 
because I go to my Father. I, Jesus is seated at the right hand of Almighty God. Hallelujah. And He's ruling and reigning from there. And you and I are in Him. He is in us, but we are in Him. And we are seated in that same place with that same authority. And He is saying, okay now, I sat down. It's time for you to get up. Amen. And I close with this. We're to be a demonstration of the resurrected, life-giving Word who is seated at the right hand of majesty on high. Hallelujah. And I pray you'll, you just set yourself to do something spectacular. Huh? Just know, believing that God, God will do it in and through you. He's for you. He's with you. There's nothing impossible to them that believe. Amen. Let's stand and praise him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anoint us with a fresh anointing, Father, with the anointing of the Lion of the tribe of Judah, with a boldness that comes with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It's not just about speaking in tongues. That does build us up, but it should build us up and empower us to be witnesses. Let us go forth with the, the anointing of the anointed one, with resurrection power demonstrated in our lives. As love flows, for faith will not work without love, but lo faith worketh by love. Let us be lovers of people, just like you are, Lord. Pour your love through us. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And let us shake this community and shake this city and shake this nation and shake our world as you give us opportunity and open doors. In Jesus' name, bless your people tonight. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Join us for services at Wellspring Church of All Nations, a dynamic church that lifts up the name of Jesus. We are meeting at 4870 Janelle Drive, located between Buffalo and Durango, with an entrance at 8140 West Lone Mountain Road. Our focus is to win the lost, connect them to Jesus and His church, train them in the Word of God, and help them find their place in the work of the Lord. Our service times are 1045 a.m. and 6 p.m. on Sunday and 6.30 p.m. on Wednesday. For more information, you can give us a call at 702-631-5027. That's 631-5027. Or you can visit our website, www.wellspringministries.com.